AEDT 1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technologies, Module 7, Video 7.3, The Psychology of Workplace Learning. Here are the guiding questions for this video. Based on the theoretical models you learned in Video 7.2, this video will suggest how you might act in your workplace as an educator or leader or trainer of employees. So I'm going to ask you to situate your learning during this clip and choose which type of adult educator might work best in your organization. And this would be for you as the learner or you as the educator. What barriers or challenges would you face in a workplace learning or professional development situation that are particular to your organization? So as an educator in the workplace, it depends on the lens you choose to view that experiential learning. We're going to take a look at how you would be different as an educator or trainer depending on what lens you use. Through a constructivist lens, the educator is the facilitator. Your role is to encourage learners to discuss and reflect and create a really trusting and open environment. You are there to challenge students' assumptions and to be a catalyst for change in their ideas. You are there as a coach, a mentor, and a diagnoser or an assessor of what students learning is prior to coming to the training and sometimes you would use professional portfolios or interviews so that learners have a voice in the process in constructing their own knowledge and in constructing their work goals. A second lens you might use is the situative framework. In this role the educator gets the learners involved in a community of practice or a professional community, a learning community where you can arrange real situations where the learners participate. You want to provide just-in-time assistance to make sure that they take confident action. So you're not there to tell them what to do, but you arrange the situations and make sure that they have the tools to do it well. You're also there to assist people who are stuck or immobilized. And you might have something called the cognitive apprenticeship, where they actually work with you as a mentor to learn what they are, are going to learn. A third lens might be the psychoanalytic lens, which goes back to Freudian thinking where you as an educator are there to facilitate analysis of psychic conflicts that might impede learning. For example, is somebody afraid of working with technology? Are they low in confidence? Have they had a bad experience in their previous workplace? You would be there to encourage students to pay attention to dreams and intuition and to elicit emotion to uncover any unconscious aspects that might block their learning. Sometimes people would get them to name their emotions or to journal about them in the in training sessions. Through the complexity lens, there's an emphasis on opening systems to change and understanding that there are a lot of factors that interact to make a successful working environment. You as the leader would be the interpreter and the facilitator, and you help the learners explore these changes through dialogue and facilitating discussion in an accepting, open environment where people acknowledge that working is complex and that there are complex solutions to workplace problems. Educators who use a critical cultural lens help learners to identify the power relationships in their lives and there are always power relationships in different organizations. So you would be there to support and encourage resistance against oppression, see beyond struggle, empowering people. And this is what Freire would refer to as the problem posing model as opposed to the banking model that we studied in another video clip. You would be there to critically engage the learner in analyzing the situation to lead to a solution and knowing that learners can then engage in some kind of social action to improve their working conditions for everybody. From the perspective of situated cognition, we learn from real world experience, but it's very different than just reflective practice alone. So the learning process is not separated from the situation. Knowledge isn't received and transferred to another situation. So you might want to put them into a workplace scenario, like a role play scenario, where they have to actually practice within that situation. Physical and social experiences are integral, and so learning from coworkers about occupational safety might be an example of that. Uh, this is where you might pair a more senior worker with a junior worker trainee to um, teach them about experience and this, the uh, workplace knowledge that's important to their particular role. A cognitive apprenticeship is something that means we want to enculturate the learner or teach them the culture of the workplace. Um, and we want to show them what the authentic practices are, such as a craft apprenticeship. Here we emphasize learning in different ways, um, thinking and skills that are associated with the craft, and you might 
think of this as kind of practitioner knowledge. For example, when teachers go into a new teaching role, they need to learn some of the practical teacher knowledge that just happens in the daily life of a school. The same could be said of um, students who are going into residency in medicine or lawyers who are going to be articling. There's a certain cultural knowledge that they need to learn in the real world practice. And that's why problem-based learning and case studies are really helpful in cognitive apprenticeships. Another way to approach it would be anchored instruction, where you create a situation in which the learners, through sustained experiences, can solve problems and situations that experts encounter. You might think of this back to the very beginning of the course where we talked about astronaut Mark Garner, where he was saying that these are situations that experts encounter. So you want to use complex problems that are investigated over time through many lenses, or things like case studies and problem-based uh, learning. This is really good when people use artificial business models or investment mock-ups where people have to predict what might happen in certain situations. So let's share our experiences in tutorial this week. A reminder of the norms for sharing because we're talking about learning from experience and sometimes our most powerful experiences are not necessarily ones we want to share, but by doing that we can reflect and unpack the experience and see what the, the knowledge is that, that you can share. Remember you have the right to pass for each of the questions. I uh, would like you to be respectful of other people's stories because we each have a different biography that we bring to this process. Try to step away from your own lens and see both similarities and differences in your life and learning experiences. The synthesis questions for today are going to be the questions that we talk about in tutorial and they're very centered on you and your experience. The first one is this. Describe the best teacher or trainer you had and why and get feedback from the group on which approach to experiential learning that teacher took. Second, are you the same learner in all situations? If you're learning at work, if you're learning at, in a school environment, or if you're learning something brand new, like in a holiday environment, like a new skill. Describe the worst learning experience you had and try to identify why it was so bad. Was it the context, the process, your personality? What was involved with that experience? And finally, get feedback from your peers on how that trainer might have done things differently based on what you now know to make it a positive experience. And please remember not to use any school or workplace names or any people's names in your sharing. I look forward to hearing about your experiences in tutorial.